Festina Lente, a Roman emperor's guide to getting stuff done. So that Roman emperor in question here is Octavian Caesar Augustus. And this opens by saying, like all historical le legacies, the one of Octavian Caesar Augustus is open to interpretation. Right, so he steered Rome through tumultuous times and ushered in a centuries-long period of order and stability known as Pax Romana. On the other hand, he delivered the killing blow to the Roman Republic and established a position so powerful that it gave subsequent emperors such as Caligula and Nero carte blanche to indulge their whims. So, you know, you got the, you got the, uh, the good and you got the bad. But here's the, the key point here. Whatever your take on Caesar Augustus, you've got to give him this. The man knew how to get things done. A lot of things that Caesar Augustus did as emperor, uh, a lot of projects to improve Rome after its many wars, his new tax and census systems. He created police forces and fire brigades. He built roads, instituted a uh, postal service. All right, so this is a guy who was uh, effective. That's one heck of a curriculum vitae. He managed all of this not only by being clever, ruthless, and politically savvy, but by following a modest yet powerful Roman principle, Festina Lente, which is often translated, make haste slowly. Comes up all the time in antiquity. So you see it, it wasn't just Caesar Augustus, but it actually comes up all the time. All right, so let's look at this, the history of this phrase. They say here, the history of an august oxymoron an ad here. All right. Did I say Roman principle? Well, not exactly. Like most things Roman, Festina Lente is Greek in origin. The Romans simply borrowed it, gave it a Latin polish, and then invoked the time-honored tradition of no backsies. But while Augustus didn't originate the principle, he did devote himself to it. The historian uh, Suetonius described how Augustus changed the military following the final civil wars in the Republic. He notes how Augustus thought nothing more derogatory to the character of an accomplished general than uh, precipitancy and rashness. To quash such impulses, Augustus trained his generals to instead make haste slowly, and that the cautious captain is better than the gold. How serious was he about this? Augustus minted a Roman coin known as an aureus with his personal branding of Festina Lente. On the side that didn't include his face, he imprinted the image of a crab hoisting a butterfly. The butterfly represented speed, the crab, caution, and deliberateness. Here's another graphic here. Uh, this is another Festina Lente graphic. You see here a dolphin around an anchor. This was uh, Aldus uh, Manutius, a Renaissance humanist who revolutionized the publishing in industry, adopted Festina Lente as his business uh, ethos. So this was his publishing imprint. So in the Renaissance, they rediscovered this idea. Uh, Cosmo de' Medici also illustrated this with a turtle sporting a sail on top of its shell. Anyways, there's a lot of images. What I'm trying to say is this idea of Festina Lente showed up a lot. So we see it, the Greeks came up with it, the Romans were really into it, it was minted on coins, the Renaissance humanists rediscovered it, they used it, Medici had artwork commissioned around it, a famous publisher in the Renaissance period had a, it as the imprint, a dolphin on an anchor. There's, if you, if you look online, you can find all sorts of other artifacts from the ancient world and from the Renaissance period where we see exactly this phrase captured in imagery. So it's a very, pop, uh, very powerful, popular phrase. Now the question is, what is meant by this and why is it relevant to us today? Well, I think the literal translation, make haste slowly, is a little bit hard to follow. There's a, a bit of an oxymoronic element to it. How can you be uh, making haste if you're going slowly? Haste is fast, slowly is slow. So I'm gonna offer here, let's call it an interpretive translation. So it's not a literal translation of what do these words mean, but an interpretive translation, a, a way of rephrasing this phrase, which I think gets to the core of what the ancient world and the Renaissance scholars who studied it thought about it, what they thought it meant. All right, so here is my interpretive translation of Festina Lente. Work slowly but relentlessly on what matters. Work slowly but relentlessly on what matters. So let's go through the three parts of that one by one, and I'll elaborate what I mean here. So slowly in this context means, of course, obviously, 
don't go fast. This is certainly what Caesar Augustus had in mind when he worried about his generals in the field being rash in their decision making. When you're too rash in your decision making, you act in the moment, you act on instinct. This can create problems. And if we bring this forward to the modern context, we can imagine it saying, don't let busyness and frenetic activity distract you from what actually matters to keep you from your best work. It could be reassuring in the moment, like the general that wants to make a decision and send their archers over there. It can be reassuring in the moment to do things. Let me do this and send this email and, and hire this consultant and publish this thing and, and start using this new tool. You feel like the activity is action and action is better than inaction. But Festina Lente is saying, slow down. Don't act hastily. Now, the cost in the modern context is not you're going to lose the battle, but it might be you're going to lose time, that you're going to get distracted, that your energy is going to be redirected from the types of activities that might have been most important for what it is you're trying to get done. We can think about this call to slowness also as a call to craft. Slow down, focus on what matters, work on your craft. That's what's going to matter. Okay, so that's the first part. Work slowly but relentlessly on what matters. What do I mean by relentlessly in this interpretive translation? Well, this is where we get to my take on the haste piece from the original translation. Don't delay or procrastinate. Don't overanalyze. So Augustus didn't want his generals, Caesar Augustus did not want his generals uh, to act hastily, but he also wanted them to act. Make the right moves when they need to be done. Don't react in the moment to your instincts or your fear. But when you see this is the right move, all right, I slowed down. I'm looking at the battlefield. That's a feint. Here's their weakness. Okay, we need to flank. Once you realize the right thing to do, because you slowed down, do it. Don't overanalyze it. Don't procrastinate on it. So this is where we get that oxymoronic tension. Slow down. Don't just be busy and frenetic, but be relentless on working on what you're working on. This is the next thing to do. Do it. Do it well. Take a beat. What's the best thing to do next? Do that and do that well. So it's the, the constant activity done intentionally with care aggregates to really big results. And I think that's the takeaway of the second piece for the modern context. Working slowly but relentlessly builds up. And if you do that long enough, you do end up with really interesting results. Even if in the moment it looks slow, if you don't stop, if you keep making progress, you keep putting out one podcast after another, very carefully trying to improve each episode from the last. You keep putting down another page of the book you're working on, and maybe it takes you longer than someone else, but you give enough time, you have a book that you're really proud of. This work relentlessly, don't stop. Keep making progress is the key counterbalance to the slow. And then I added the matters piece. So go back to my translation, work slowly but relentlessly on what matters. So what I mean by what, uh, what matters is, okay, making sure you're focused on the right things. So slow down. Don't just be reactive. But when you do, keep making progress relentlessly. Don't stop and make sure you're aimed in the right direction. So you, the, the generals for Caesar Augustus hearing Faustina Lente, they know what they're trying to do. We're trying to take this high ground. We're trying to take this city back from uh, the barbarian hordes. They know what matters and they don't lose sight of that. That's what we're trying to do. And then they slow down so they're not being too reactive and they make the relentless project on progress on the right decisions in the moment that push them into long term towards what matters. So work slowly but relentlessly on what matters. That is an ancient piece of wisdom. As we saw, the Greeks talked about it. The Romans stole it from them. The Renaissance humanists that rediscovered the Greeks and the Romans stole it from them. So everyone who has encountered this idea has adopted it with enthusiasm which from a mimetic standpoint tells us there's probably something in this idea that fits well with human nature. That spirit of slowing down, doing less, being more careful about your decisions, staying focused on the things that matters, but also keep making progress. You keep moving down the path. You keep making progress towards what matters. Trusting in the short term, you're just focused on making a good decision and building something, a step you're proud of. And in the long term, you end up at a cool destination. That's classic slow productivity. So Festina Lente, make haste slowly, or to put it my way, work slowly uh, but relentlessly on what matters. A little bit less pithy, but I think that gets to the core of what all who have rediscovered this advice really liked.